there is no separation between samsara and nirvana, or between delusion and enlightenment. We are living in a single reality, and within this one reality, many things are happening. Our practice is not to escape from delusion or samsara, but to practice right in the middle of them. We try to manifest nirvana within samsara. That is a Mahayana teaching or a Bodhisattva teaching. Originally, uh, Buddhist teaching is considered as uh, we are within samsara and suffering and nirvana is a cessation of suffering. So Buddhist practice is a process of living from suffering or samsara and reaching nirvana. But in Mahayana Buddhist, Buddhism, people find to reach nirvana by oneself, personally. It's not so meaningful because we are connected with all beings. Bodhisattva vow that is fact the meaning of living by vow is we are because we are living together with all beings interconnectedly. Only one person reach Nirvana is not enough. But we need to go to Nirvana together with all other beings. Next stage is uh, Sansara and Nirvana are not two separate places. But we can find Nirvana within Sansara. That is what Mahayana Buddhist, particularly Nagarjuna said, thought. Sansara and Nirvana and suffering and Nirvana or awakening are one thing. The place we can find Nirvana is only within Sansara. So our practice is not escape from the problematic world, but this is the only place we can live and practice uh, and find nirvana. Aspiration is transformed. That means first we want to uh, become free from suffering and reach nirvana. But that aspiration is transformed and try to find nirvana within samsara together with all beings. That is another kind of a second transformation. Though poor, never poor, though sick, never sick, though aging, never aging, though dying, never dying. Reality prior to division, herein lies unlimited depth. When we think in a conceptual, logical way, first half and second half are opposite and contradicted. But what Vichyamroshi is saying is poor and not poor, dying and not dying, aging and yet not aging, uh, interpenetrated each other. That means he was actually dying when he wrote that poem. Uh, he was about 70 years old and he had a TB, so he, physically he was not a healthy person, but mentally he was very strong and a healthy person. So when he around 70 years old, we f expect he was dying, and he, I think he himself thought so. That was why he wrote the poems about life and death. And uh, within that particular poem, he said, suffering and nirvana, or samsara and nirvana, or living and dying, uh, and aging and not aging, are not two separate things, and life is good, death is bad, or positive and negative. So if possible, I don't want to die. But he, his uh, awakening is life and death is one thing. So there's no choice, and we don't need to choose. But f that is also what Dogen said in Shobo Genzo, Life and Death. So our practice is not escape from death, 
and uh, our practice not for living forever, but living and dying together makes life. Even when we understand that, still it's really difficult to uh, live daily lives based on that understanding. Our life uh, to see both together as one uh, has no bottom. More we study and practice, uh, we can go further, deeper, and there's no bottom. So our practice has no goal. And yet, from the beginning, we are living within oneness of life and death. So it's kind of a st strange teaching.